Good evening, everyone, and um, welcome to the, can you hear me okay? Welcome to the Unitarian, the Universalist Unitarian Church of Halifax, or Unitarian Universalist congregation. We are a spiritual community for curious and compassionate seekers. We are a community of people united not by common beliefs, but by our common desires to uh, be human beings who struggle and try to figure out what it means to live a good life in this one life that we have to make a difference on this world. We are united in our desire to seek a path that connects us to one another and makes us feel deeply, deeply the thing that mystics have discovered for centuries that deep down we are all interconnected. That life is a beautiful gift, and it is all too short. That mystery and wonder and awe are to be discovered every day. That this existence is a miracle. And that the earth itself is part of our own bodies, is part of who we are, and we are deeply connected to it. We are not separate from nature, but we are literally a part of it. That we are all made of the same star stuff. We make space here in this community for many, many different ways of understanding truth and wisdom in this world. We draw from many traditions and we draw from the earth-based tradition as well. And so we are here tonight on this winter solstice, the darkest night of the year, to ground ourselves in darkness, to celebrate the darkness, to celebrate the thing that gives us rest, the thing that reminds us, that reminds us of the need to pause from the busyness and pause from creating and doing and let ourselves be for, for a time. We are here because darkness reminds us, reminds us of um, that sometimes we forget to see something when it is always there. When it is light all of the time, we may forget. We may forget what true brightness looks like. Anyone who's ever been in a hotel or uh, your bedroom and you're trying to sleep, catch up on some sleep, and the light is shining right in your face and you try to close the curtains, you know the value of darkness, the value of not being overstimulated by everything that's out there. But most importantly, I think, that darkness, well, sometimes it's better when I don't talk. It reminds me that. So I'm going to light our chalice as we enter into this winter solstice night. It's the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. And let the light of this chalice tonight be our reminder. Be our reminder of our connection to the elements. Let the fire in this chalice remind us of that. But bef and as I light our chalice, we're going to sing a song. It's number 55 in your hymnal. It's Dark of Winter. wait to light our chalice. Let's sing first. Let's 
pause. A little bit of pause before the light. I light our chalice, which is the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist movement. Um, normally I would use a candle, but today I'm going to use a match. Fire reminds us uh, of the potential for light and beauty in everything. And fire is amazing because when there's a spark, it shows just how much potential there is in our presence all the time. And it is from darkness that we get light. We could not have light without darkness because we need that contrast between the two things. So when we light the match, we witness the return of something beautiful. And we remember that it's all around us all the time. It's on the back of your order of service. Oops, that's on, okay. <laughs> earth my body, spirit, earth my body, water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. Join in when you feel uh, comfortable. It's just earth gonna... my body, water my blood, air my breath, and fire my spirit. Earth my body, water my So now, in, in, in lieu of Mary Claude today, Sarah and I are going to share a story with children of all ages. So if Sarah can manage the blanket, Miranda, go help her. Phoebe, go help her. All of our helpers. There you go. We're going to lay out our blanket. And before the children sit down, I'm going to stick something in the middle. All right, so that all the kids feel free to come on up. This is a story time. Everybody come. Here we go. Everybody who wants to come. We need a Mabel and a Rebecca. All right, guys. And there's a story that we often tell kind of off the top of our head on these solstice nights in our family. And when we went to uh, prepare for tonight, we thought, you know what? Someone's already written a pretty good one. And so we're going to read that one tonight. Okay. All right. So this is The Rebirth of the Sun by Starhawk. Circle round, and I'll tell you a story about when the sun was born again. It was the middle of winter, and the sun had grown very old. All year long, the sun had worked very hard rising and setting each day on earth shining and shining giving energy to the trees and the flowers and the grasses so that they could grow and feed the animals and birds and insects and people Sarah, I'm gonna pause just for one second we do have the images that we have for this story I should have cued you <laughs> oh, <yeah>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's 
start at the beginning, I think. Okay. Because we have our pictures. When they come up. There we go. Winners. Do you want to go to the third slide? Yeah, just there you go. Can you play them one slide at a time? Yeah, I'm going to put them up on PowerPoint for you. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hang on. So the drawings were done by me and Miranda and Taryn and Alice, who do not want me to point them out, but I'm going to anyway, apparently. <laughs> and they're all done in watercolor and pencil and ink. So again, it was the middle of winter and the sun had grown very old. All year long, the sun had worked very hard, rising and setting day after day. All year long, the sun had fed everybody on earth shining and shining, giving energy to the trees and the flowers and the grasses so that they could grow and feed the animals and birds and insects and people. All year, the sun's gravity held tight to the spinning ball of the earth and the twirling ball of the moon and the seven or eight other whirling planets as they traveled around and around and around until the poor sun was dizzy watching it all. Now the poor tired son could barely make it up in the morning and after a very short time needed to sleep again. So the days grew shorter and the nights grew longer until the day was so short it was hardly worth getting up for. Night felt sorry for the son. Come to my arms and rest child, she said. After all, I am your mother. You were born out of my darkness billions and billions of years ago and you will return to me when all things end let me cradle you now as i shelter every galaxy and star in the universe so night wrapped her great arms around the sun and the night was very long indeed why does the dark go on so long asked children all over the earth I think we're out of water, but that's all right. Won't the sun ever come back again? The sun is very tired, the old one said. But maybe if you children say thank you for all the things the sun does for us, the light may return in the morning. So the children sang songs to the sun. They thought about all the things the sun gave them. Thank you for growing the lettuces and the corn and the rice and the wheat, they said. Thank you for growing the trees of the forest and the seaweed of the oceans and the krill that feeds the whales. Thank you for stirring the air and making winds that bring the rain. Every time a child said thank you, the sun began to feel a little warmer, a little brighter. Wrapped safely in the arms of night, the sun grew younger and younger. At last, the children had to go to bed. We will stay up and wait for the sun to rise again, the old one said. Can't we stay up too, the children asked. You can try, but you will get too sleepy, the old one said. But you can each light a candle, because all fire is a spark of the sun's fire. Put your candle in a very safe place and let it keep vigil for you as you sleep and dream of sunshine. So the children lit their candles and put them in very safe places and each flame was a little spark of the sun's fire. And the sun peeped out from between the arms of night and saw all the little fires and began to feel warmer and brighter and younger still. Early in the morning, the old ones woke the children. Together they climbed a high hill and faced to the east, the direction of sunrise. <coughs> they sang songs to the sun and ran around trying to keep warm they waited and waited to see what dawn would bring. The sky began to turn from black to indigo to blue. Slowly the sky grew light. A golden glow crept over the horizon. Night opened her great arms and in a burst of brightness, the sun appeared new and strong and shining. For in the long night, the sun had rested well and grown young from the songs and the thanks of the children, young as a brand new baby, born out of night once more. Everybody cheered and the children jumped up and down. 
The sun has returned, the sun is reborn, the people cried, and they danced and sang to celebrate the birth of a new day, and then they went home for breakfast. <laughs> Which is the best way to end a story, really. <laughs> Do you want the? Do you want just want the that mic? Does this work, guys? Is it working? Yeah, it works. Perfect. All right. So the next part. Before we go into the darkness, we're going to get dressed up just a little bit. And so I have here our basket of scarves and things. That one's Alice's and this one's Miranda's. But all the other ones, this one was once Taryn's, are up for grabs. And we could just throw them around our, our, our shoulders like a cape. You can have the purple one, yeah. Some of them are still tied. And if not, you can ask one of the other kids to help you tie it. Hey, Mabel, and I have a rainbow. There you go. No, that's okay. Where's Aaron at? Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap it around our shoulders. Oh, it's Vanessa. So it goes around your back. Sarah's going to help you, or maybe Dad can. Can you help with the tying? Has everyone managed it? Not quite yet. Aaron, can you come help tie little tie things around people, Alice? Do you have something on? Does all the little people have a scarf? You can hold this one. Do you want to hold it? Okay. Just a little bit. All right. So we're getting all ready and dressed up because once it's dark, we're not going to be able to see. Mabel, can you pass me that basket of instruments too? Just so I can have it close to me? Why won't we be able to see? What good question, Gabrielle. Why don't you go sit down? Where you are. Go sit. There you go. Whoops. Oh, and so, so we are going to talk about the dark. We're going to talk about what the darkness is like. Has anyone here ever been in a room that was all the way dark before? No. Yeah, I bet you have. You know why? Because you live in Nova Scotia <laughs> and the power goes out a lot, doesn't it? Anytime a strong wind blows, we might just lose power. So you guys have probably woken up in the dark and went, oh, it's dark again. Oh, I better get my flashlight that my mom keeps right by my bed because this happens a lot. Exactly. So we've all exactly. So we all have had those moments in the darkness. And so I'm wondering when it gets to be the longest night, because that's what tonight is. It's the longest night of the year. And do you know this happens every year? And this has happened since the dawn, literally the dawn of time. So how do you think you might have felt back in the olden days when you didn't have a flashlight? What about in times when you didn't even have a candle? Then we would just go to bed. People would just be sleeping. They couldn't do anything at all because it's so dark that they cannot see anything. And so we're going to take a look and see what it feels like to be in the darkness here together. And so find a nice safe place on the blanket where you know where you are. It's not gonna be that dark because look, we live in a city and there's gonna be lights outside and we're gonna have our emergency exit. So it's not gonna be that dark, but we're just gonna feel what the darkness feels like. It's not gonna be scary. Look, you're sitting right by your cousin and you can hold her hand, okay? And so I've got my candle here and I'm going to need a match eventually. <laughs> and so now, the grown-ups are going to start. Is everyone ready? We're all together. No, Gabrielle, you're going to sit right where you were. Okay, there you go. <laughs> all right. And so now we're going to turn off all of the lights and we're going to think about what it's like to be in the darkness. Are you ready? Okay. So what lights are going to go off first? Let's see. One at a time, though. Oh. Okay. We're going to figure out how to turn the lights off. There we go. And Reverend Israel's going to get the lights out there. That's a good question. I, I think tree, maybe Jessica is ready to unplug the tree. Oh, no. the tree. We're all. Two, one. And then the final. Oh, there goes the tree. 
And and are we ready now? We've got yeah, one we final go. thing, and we have the chalice. Oh. Dude, there's a light shining in the yeah. audience. Even the candles died. Yeah, that's ready? right. So we're going to blow out our last light, and then we're going to think about the darkness. Here we are in the mostly dark. <laughs> we can't make it any darker, but this is as dark as we can get in the city on a street. What was that, Taryn? What do you Since notice you in the dark? Since you can't see like, the actual like, color, the cat, like, the intense. Oh, you can see, the you can see shiny <laughs> things in the dark better, can't you? When there's just a little bit of light, you can see the reflection off of shining things. Is there anything else that you notice when it's a little bit darker? I see that there's a lot of shadows. Um, well, there's no shadows anymore. Yeah, there's just a little bit of shadows. Anyone other than Gabrielle have any thoughts about the dark? Peaceful. It feels peaceful. Yeah. Sleepy. You makes you feel a little sleepy. <laughs> Did you guys notice that it's a little quieter and you can hear more things a little bit in the dark? Because it feels like everyone is really quieter, aren't they? I want everyone to take a big deep breath, okay? Here we are in the dark, in the winter, just like people who have been in the dark in the winter for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, since the dawn of time. That's right. We're connected to all of the people who sat in the dark on this night before us. Now, what do you think will happen when you listen? When we lit one little spark. Do you remember what Reverend Israel said about lighting a match? That you cannot have a burst of light without a little darkness. The fire's not going out, it's settling in. So now we have one little candle lit. Do you notice, has anything changed with one little candle lit? Yes. Much brighter. It feels a little brighter, doesn't it? And a little warm. <laughs> Does it feel a little warmer? It does feel a little bit brighter. Did you notice that the little candle, you can kind of see even more light because it's on the mirror underneath. It, it, it makes us feel like it's warmer, even just to see light, doesn't it? It must have felt a little colder in the dark. What was that? The smell of the fire is comforting. So now I have a question for you. What do you think if we lit one more candle? Would you feel like that would be a little lighter? So I'm going to need Sarah if you want to get the uh, the, the candle lighter from the uh, from the altar there. I guess I should have bought that before we turned off the lights. And so here's what we're going to do, my guys. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a very quiet little parade, and we're going to sing a song. And we're going to very carefully walk back and forth across the room together. And you guys are going to walk slowly and we're all going to take turns holding this fire, holding our light. And we're going to light all the candles in this room. Okay, and we're going to sing a song while we do it. In the dark. In the dark. So this is a basket of instruments. And I'm going to hand everyone an instrument to hold. Sit up, guys. Are you ready? If, okay. So I'm going to give everyone a shaker and a drum, toddler one, okay. Yep, that's a drum, you go ahead. Who else would like a drum? There's a drum, and there's lots of shaky. Oh, just a little No, yeah, go for it. Everyone else have one? Okay. Now I need my first kiddo who's gonna hold my fire for me. Okay, Erin, uh, can I ask you two? <laughs> All right. So does everyone have an instrument? No? Take one to the basket. Just pick something. There you go. Are we ready?
practice doing that. So. I've been searching through the darkness. Return to me, beloved, for the night's gone on too long. Return to me, my love. I won't rest until I found you. Return to me, beloved, and you bring me back the dawn. Return to me, my love. I've been searching through the darkness. Return to me. For the night's gone on too long Return to me, my love I won't rest until i found you Return to me, beloved And you bring me back the dawn Return to me, my love I've been searching through the darkness Return to me, beloved For the night's gone For the night's gone on too long Return to me, my love I won't rest until i found you Return to me, beloved And you bring me back the dawn Return to me, my love I've been searching through the darkness Return to me, beloved And you bring me back the dawn Return to me, my love I've been searching through the darkness Return to me, beloved For the night's gone on too long Return to me, my love <laughs> Return to me, beloved And you bring Return to me, my love I've been searching through the darkness Return to me, beloved For the night's gone on too long Return to me, my love I've been searching until I found you Return to me, beloved Wonderful, all right. 
right. <laughs> I want to, you turn me on. My microphone, okay, just, okay. I'm going to invite you all just to take, um, just to take a moment to savor the emergence of this light from this dark space that we are in. To take a moment and ground yourself in your breath the thing that flows in and out of your, of your body connects you to all of those who have come before, who have been lighting fires for those centuries we heard about. Reminding ourselves that it is our breath that carries us forth into the next moment, yearning for more life and more light. We remember that our ancestors lit these fires because they, because at some point in the past, people literally wondered whether or not the sun would actually come back. And they thought that if they did not coax it out, pull it out, call it out, that it might leave them forever and that they might be in darkness forever. And so they had to make noise and shake things and light bonfires to remind themselves that there was light even in the darkest of moments. Remind themselves that even though the light would crawl back slowly, <laughs> that it would be here and it would return. And so that is what is so beautiful about these grounding ourselves in these this ancient practice. Of appreciating darkness. For the... <laughs> for the wonder that it creates and appreciating the unexpected. Like the flash of of a meteor shower in the middle of the night or a firefly. The sun crawls back and it returns to us. So it is our job now We have to bring the sun back. You're all going to help us bring the sun back. So we need to make a little bit of noise first. <laughs> and where are those candles? I need a candle. <laughs> Does everyone have a candle? Oh, the little, oh, can I have one? We're going to pass the light from to each other. We're going to sing a song called Rise Up, O Flame. What number is it? Number 362. It's also on the back of the order of service. It's on your order of service. If you feel... If you feel like holding paper in a candle doesn't feel like a great idea to you personally, you can use the hymnal. I have a fire extinguisher in the room. <laughs> so we need to call the sun back. And we're going to do it by singing Rise Up, O Flame, and lighting our candles, passing the light from each, uh, one person to each other and watching it grow slowly. Don't rush to pass your flame, actually. Take your time. Light your candle. 
and appreciate the contrast of the darkness and the light. I wonder what it was like before there was no light, before that sacred spark in the dark. Yes, that moment before light was created and it was good. because it's got those like preschool vibes to it that I just love. Um, but this is one we often do the morning after when the sun comes back up to announce that the sun has arrived. So the words are simple. The sun is born again today. We greet the sun's first morning ray. We sing and celebrate the light. The sun is born in the, sh the longest night. All right. The sun is born again today. We greet the sun's first morning ray. We sing and celebrate the light. The sun's born in the longest night. The sun is born again today. We greet the sun's first morning ray. We sing and celebrate the light. The sun's born in the longest night. The sun is born again today. We greet the sun's first morning ray. We sing and celebrate the light. The sun's born in the longest night. The sun is born again today. We greet the sun's first morning ray. We sing and celebrate the light. The sun's born in the longest night. The sun is born again today. We greet the sun's first morning ray. We sing and celebrate the light. The sun's born in the longest night. Thanks, kids. 
<laughs> if you'd like to rise in body or in spirit, we're going to sing Deck the Halls next. <laughs> Once I find the music and just take a moment, too, to think about what is <laughs> born in you on this day, too. Deck the Halls is Deck the Halls is a solstice song and is a Yule song. If you didn't know. Hmm? No, go ahead. The sun is born in on this earth again today. It is returned. Whoop. It is returned. Not the guitar. It will take its time coming back, of course. And so will the uh, warmth of spring. And it may seem like that might be a little far away, but it will be back. I invite you to take a moment as we come out of this space today just to gaze at your lights during the postlude. To think about the light that is in you, that is in all of us, and that is yearning to break free every day. To think about the things that must be coaxed out of you. <laughs> to return back to warmth, even when things feel icy and cold. Here comes the sun, and I say it's alright. 
all of us in the cycles of lightness and dark, of birth and death and rebirth, of new life born from current life, in the continuation of memory, of legacy that we are all a part of. We remember that as the sun sets, it will rise on a new day, and the population of this earth, the people on this earth, will never be the same on any day as they were the day before. And that we are all part of a living, continuing, breathing stream of carrying the flame with us out into the world to bring our light to the world, to share it with others, and to not let it go out. We're going to blow our candles out one by one, slowly. <laughs> Partially so we don't set off the fire alarm. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to do this like the wave at like a stadium. <laughs> so that we can watch it slowly go out. I'm going to, I'm going to point to you. <laughs> We're going to light a Yuletide bonfire in the front yard, and we have hot chocolate and mold punch. I don't know, it's, it's like glue. And I'm going to set uh, a sign-out sheet on the welcome table for those who would like to attend our gathering on January 1st. The menu that went out today was missing a camp. Yeah, sorry about that, Marilyn. I'll send out a thing.
comes the sun, and then no one called them up. I Rowan was vaulting, so. He was vaulting. He said to it. Oh, no, Rowan didn't want to. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know that. They I, had it all set. I yeah. just kept going. I well, the last, the last part. Well, yeah. I was waiting, and I was like, she's not saying anything, so I guess I'll just do it. Well, I thought there was going to be closing oh, words first, and then they were going to play. Why did you want that? And we, we see if Rowan was going to do something in the middle. Too. Well, and I was wondering if you were doing that too. <laughs> no, I skipped it. I didn't mean to. It just happened. So, is he mad? Like, I, 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 I didn't. I had your spine. Like, I just like, oh, yeah. 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 and also like 